Yes, it's back on February 24th. Netflix's Drive to Survive hits a fifth season, and every motor racing fan's favorite soap opera once more returns to the streaming site. But what do we want to see as we take a look back through Netflix's eyes in the 2022 season? Here at GP Fans, these are some of the moments that we want more of the juicy details of from behind the scenes in Formula One last year. Remember to give us a heads up in the comments section if there's anything we missed. And of course, gpfans.com and gpfansglobal on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well for all of your latest news in Formula One. We know that while McLaren were telling us they had no plans to get rid of Daniel Ricciardo, Oscar Piastri was already being lined up to be the Australian's replacement at the team. So when was the first contact between Piastri, his people and McLaren? And how much did the Australian know about it all himself? Was he as oblivious as the rest of us? And what was Piastri saying to Alpine during all of this too? More information needed, please Netflix. Last season was meant to be full of hope for Haas, with their back of the grid struggles potentially coming to an end. But the invasion of Ukraine by Russia brought an unexpected political firestorm to their door during pre-season testing, with the team's young Russian driver Nikita Mazepin and main financial backer Dmitry Mazepin's company Uralkari, both linked, of course, to the Russian state. Gunther Steiner, Haas's team principal, has arguably been the individual who has benefited from Drive to Survive the most. Many want to see now how he coped in a very complex moment in time for the team and one that changed the constructors' future, with a new sponsor and new driver needed before the start of last season. Netflix put us in that driver's meeting in Saudi Arabia. When an oil refinery was bombed in retaliation by Yemeni rebels, another global political firestorm was brought to F1's front door. This time, the safety of the drivers and the teams was brought into question, as the bomb facility was just kilometres from the Jeddah street circuit during Friday practice in Saudi Arabia. A long night of meetings took place with drivers convinced to stay and race that weekend, despite many fearing more attacks and that the event shouldn't take place. Let us be a fly on the wall and see who were the main dissenters during that meeting and what was said to convince them to stay. So many questionable calls, so many frustrating foul-ups. We've heard the radio calls on TV already, but let's see the debriefs for the Scuderia and the drivers. The explanation to Charles Leclerc as to what happened in Monaco. The car ablaze for Carlos Sainz for too long in Austria as it began to roll back down the hill. Ferrari's season was filled with drama and we kind of want to see it all. All is apparently well between Red Bull racing drivers Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, but in Brazil it certainly wasn't. Verstappen will be in Drive to Survive this year, albeit with an element of creative control around what is shown of him. So we may not see much behind the scenes of him and Checo's bust up in Brazil, or get to know if it all stemmed from an intentional crash by the Mexican driver in Monaco. How was the gap bridged between the two? How was it repaired by Christian Horner? And is the rift really fixed or just being held by duct tape and string? What else have we missed out on our list here at GP Fans? As I say, let us know in the comments section below and gpfans.com for all of your latest F1 news.